Microgreens have become very popular in recent years and seem to be a key crop for many market gardeners, especially in an urban context. It's been fascinating to watch the development of this relatively new crop or method of growing and to see the diversity of different techniques that other growers have been pioneering. I've learned so much about this from watching videos from other growers, although I didn't think it was so relevant for me given the context and scale that I grow in. Microgreens are typically presented as a high value product that is produced within the context of supplying high end restaurants or access to a wealthy urban markets. I didn't get the sense that it was an overly useful crop in the context of people growing their own food or when supplying local rural markets and small communities like I'm in. But late last year I thought I'd try growing microgreens as I was interested in exploring this way of producing food and to try to help fill a gap in the supply of salad greens over the winter. Having grown quite a few batches since then and tried out a number of different methods, I have now changed my opinion about growing microgreens. Microgreens are quite a bit different from other methods of growing salad greens or other vegetables. Basically, it is harvesting plants at the very beginning of their growth, just after they've started to produce leaves, and a new batch of seeds has to be sown for the next harvest. Growing microgreens is not really viable unless you can get access to large quantities of inexpensive seed, and even then it can be quite expensive compared to the amount of harvest that you can get. There is a huge diversity of different types of plants that you can grow in this way, though I've generally stuck with peas, sunflowers and radish, plus occasionally some kale. This type of cropping has a very short growing cycle, with only two to four weeks from sowing the seed to harvesting, depending on the type of plant and the growing conditions. Microgreens are often grown in flats or trays of growing medium or potting compost, generally inside a polytunnel or some other type of controlled growing environment. Some other growers have had success in producing microgreens directly in the garden soil, and although this seems a bit less common, I've had pretty good success with it. I started growing microgreens in flats or trays late last autumn, and I grew them in a heated propagation space that I had built, which was going to be empty over the winter. I was using a variety of types of trays, including the wooden flats that I had built for raising seedlings and soil blocks. It seemed a good way to make use of this infrastructure and equipment at a time when they were not needed for other uses. I was surprised that they grew reasonably well, despite the low light levels of the winter months, although there were some losses and other issues as I figured things out. But because I was growing a new batch every few weeks or so, losing an occasional batch wasn't such a big deal for me. I also found that the quick turnover was very useful, as it enabled me to learn quickly, much faster than with conventional growing, where I often have to wait until next season to try again. It was also interesting to get into the weekly routines of soaking seeds and then spreading them out onto the flats of growing medium or potting compost. And I found that keeping the flats stacked in the warmth inside my house for a few days after sowing really sped up the germination rate uh, before moving them into the propagation space to grow. Later in the season when the propagation space started to fill up with other seedlings and as the weather warmed up, I started to move the flats into the unheated polytunnel garden instead. I generally harvested as much of the crop as I needed each day and it turned out to be a very useful supply of salad greens throughout the winter and into the early spring. Later in the spring, I switched to growing microgreens directly in the soil of one of the beds of the polytunnel garden mainly because the propagation space was starting to fill up with other plants. But I also wanted to move away from sowing them in trays or flats, because I didn't want to continue to buy in more and more of the growing medium. I set out one garden bed that was one meter wide and six meters long, and sowed one square meter at a time with a different mix of types of seeds, with a new batch being sown roughly every week. By the time I was ready to sow the seventh batch, the first batch would have already been harvested, allowing enough time for the remains of this previous crop to be dug in. For each sowing, I would ensure that I started with a fine seed bed before evenly spreading the seeds directly onto the flat surface of the soil. I would then cover the seeds with a thin layer of additional soil or compost, which apparently helps the growth in this context, though I haven't done much of my own exploration about how useful this is. Once the seeds were watered in, I covered the section of the bed with a plastic lined board, which was weighed down with a pallet. It seems that this weight above the seedlings helps them to root properly and prevents the seeds from drying out, but it needs to be removed a few days later so that the seedlings can develop leaves. I found that this method of growing microgreens directly on the surface of the garden soil was an effective way to grow the amount of microgreens that I could manage in a week, 
and I was surprised at how productive they could be. I was regularly harvesting about 2.5 kilograms each week of very tasty and nutritious microgreens from each square meter of bed after only two to three weeks of growth. With a continual replanting, a bed dedicated to growing like this could potentially produce a lot of microgreens over a full year. As this polytunnel started to fill up with other summer crops, I shifted away from growing the microgreens in a dedicated bed and tried growing them as an infill crop among the other plants instead. This seemed to be quite a useful way to use the space after the successional harvesting of early potatoes, which were only being harvested a few plants at a time. As soon as enough space was available, I would rake the soil to produce a flat seed bed, sow the seeds, cover with compost, water in, and then cover the seeds with a board for a few days. The microgreens seemed to grow quite well in this context, right beside the actively growing potato plants, and it all seemed to work out reasonably well. Because the very young microgreen plants would not have started to pull a lot of nutrients out of the soil, I felt that there wouldn't be many issues with competition, and this seemed to be the case. I just needed to make sure that there was enough soil moisture and that they were far enough away from the potatoes so that there wasn't too much overshadowing and I needed to be a little bit more careful when harvesting the adjacent potato plants. Growing microgreens in this way as a type of succession or infill planting to make use of part of the bed while the rest of the crop was being harvested I think has real value in an intensive growing space like this. There are of course some issues with growing microgreens and perhaps the most significant is the amount of seed that is required and this can cause it to be quite expensive. With the other crops that I've been growing in the gardens, the cost of the seed is usually very low and typically insignificant compared to the amount of food that one seed can produce. This isn't the case with microgreens and one of the reasons that I was uneasy about growing them in the first place was that it seemed to be a waste of the seed to harvest a plant so young. This still bothers me a bit, and I'd definitely like to explore the possibilities of growing my own microgreen seeds. Some of the other issues that I came across included the expense of the growing medium that I was buying in in order to grow microgreens in flats. I can appreciate for many market gardeners the ease, convenience and reduced risk of buying in specially prepared growing medium for this is a big part of the process, and definitely worth the cost. For those of us growing at a smaller scale, I think there's other options. And for me, it seems to make more sense to grow microgreens directly in the soil of one of my gardens. I have had some issues with mold, which can apparently be an issue with microgreens, and perhaps it is harder to control when growing in the soil. I've also occasionally had problems with seed germination, and I wonder if this may be due to a buildup of disease organisms in the soil, or that the decomposition of the remains of the previous crop may be causing some of these problems. And I wonder what kind of issues would develop if I was to continue to grow a succession of microgreen crops in the same bed for a long period of time. Growing them as a scattered and an occasional crop between other vegetables is an option that seems to work well, though can make it more difficult to plan and to maintain a consistent supply. But making use of these small spaces in the garden combined with occasionally growing in flats may be a useful combination for small scale production or for somebody growing just for themselves. Another issue that I had for a while in the polytunnel was that mice kept eating a lot of the sunflower seeds and making a mess by burrowing out of sight under the cover board. This was a hassle and I tried a number of different methods to get rid of them or to deter them and ended up reverting to sowing sunflowers in flats again for a while. But then I realized that I had typically spread seeds right up to the edge of the cover board and sometimes beyond, which made it far too easy for the mice to locate the crop. I found that if I didn't let any sunflower seeds come close to the edge of the cover board when I was sowing them, this seemed to prevent the mice from being able to find the seeds. This was a really simple solution to a tricky problem and it's worked so far. Overall, I'm quite impressed with the possibilities of growing microgreens and with how productive they can be. I found them to be very useful when other crops are not so available. Whether this is due to poor planning on my part, or some disease or pest issues, or because of natural variations in the seasons. If I feel that there might be a gap coming up in what I can harvest from the gardens, or if there is limited variety available, then sowing a range of microgreens can really help. I think that this is perhaps the greatest value for people growing food for themselves and to share with their neighbours, as well as for community farms and market gardeners. Microgreens can help make it easier to be self-sufficient in vegetables throughout the full year, or at least in this climate. 
And I didn't expect to see microgreens as part of developing the resilience of our food supply systems, especially for those of us who grow our own food. Assuming that I can continue to buy seeds at a reasonable price or to grow enough of my own, then microgreens can be a way to quickly supply nutritious greens when problems develop or if disaster strikes. I also think that microgreens can be a really valuable way to learn how to grow or to begin to grow your own vegetables. The really quick time between sowing and harvesting means that we can learn a lot faster and explore a lot of different possibilities in a short time and in a small space. This is something that could take years and a lot of effort and space with conventional crops in a garden. And this is perhaps one of the most interesting benefits of growing microgreens.